we gave uh, the users suggested quick actions and users actually preferred exploring. That's one thing I've learned across the board. People just like to explore. So if you suggest it for them, it's less successful than if you get them, point them to the right place for them to explore. And then they, they do a lot more from there. Welcome to Behind Experience, where we give you an inside look behind the people who create the product-led experiences that we all love. Each week, you'll hear inspiring new examples, hard-earned lessons, and proven strategies from experts all around the world. This is one of your co-hosts, Ramley John, and Lila, my other co-host, and I. Will, today, we'll be chatting with Deepti. She is the Product Growth Group Manager at Adobe, and we'll be talking a lot about Adobe Photoshop today. Now, if you've ever used Adobe Photoshop, you know how powerful it is. You can do so many things with it, but with great power comes potentially confusion. <laughs> And with that, we're we're gonna dig into one thing that uh, Deepti has worked on: uh, hands-on tutorial and quick actions in the modal to help with that problem for new users. Anyway, let's jump in in our chat with Deepti. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the show where we geek out on frameworks, tools, and examples that drive product adoption. This is Ramley John, one of your hosts, and I have my lovely co-host here, Lila. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here with you on a happy, 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 sunny Friday. Um, and I'm really excited because we're joined by a former colleague of mine, believe it or not, Deepti Pradeep. She is a product growth group manager at Adobe. And we actually worked on stuff together at Litmus. So known Deepti a while. How's it going, Deepti? Welcome to the show. Thanks, Lila. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be on the show. It's my first podcast. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's your podcast debut. We feel so honored. This is right. Yeah, I'm very honored. I don't know if that's a good thing for you or not, but you know, for oh, me, it's, it's great. definitely a good thing. That means we get all the fresh ideas, nothing you've said before, <laughs> anybody else. Exclusives. So Exclusives. Yeah. Um, well, if you don't know, we talk about all things kind of UX on the show, but we love onboarding and we love what you've been working on um, at Adobe. But before we kind of dig into some of the nitty gritty, I'd love to just get like a level set and learn about how you define onboarding at Adobe. I can imagine there's probably a little bit more complicated than some smaller companies, but curious how you all are thinking about it. Yeah, I think Adobe is, is, is such a complex ecosystem and each of the products are so complex. So the way to simple, simply, simplify it and break it down is to say that for us, onboarding is to enable a user to achieve creative success as quickly as possible. Um, if they come in and they get lost and they get overwhelmed, we lose them. So how can we simplify the ecosystem and the capabilities, drive time to value and give the users a sense of achievement in their early days? So that's our goal. Everything we do is, is it revolves around, around that. Makes an absolute ton of sense here. Um, in terms of, I, if, if just before we recorded, you, we chatted about you, uh, your team just really focused on creative cloud. Is that is that correct? That's right. So in Adobe, again, given the complex right. set of products, you have creative cloud individuals, which is the B2C, you have creative cloud for teams. That's a different uh, team that focuses on that growth team. There's creative cloud express that has a different growth team. There's document cloud that's focused on Acrobat that has a different growth team. So my growth team is focused on all of the individuals um, and the creative cloud suite, which has Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, um, all of that. Makes sense. So, so for that particular um, product itself, like well, how would what is what is the success in terms of of new users in terms of like that onboarding? Like, is it you know finally setting up Photoshop and and actually start designing, or is it something else? So I guess it really depends on what uh, what what they're particularly using for uh, for in the creative cloud. You know, it eventually just comes down to how frequently they use it because if they stop frequently using it, they've got no event, but they stopped stopped working on it, and it's got a direct correlation to uh, whether it's trial conversion or attention. So everything we do is focused on getting them to use many times in a given week and they're, if they're a new user or just increasing their average days of user, getting them to towards uh, being more of a power user over time. And that's defined by the types of tools and the types of actions that they, that they perform within the product. Uh, but for a new user from an onboarding perspective, it's again, that it's like, how can we simplify it for you? So you come back 
many days in a given week um, and then keep exploring it and you will get to your creative success. We have no control over whether you actually achieve it, right? But then what we can do is show you the way and uh, make it easier for you. Yeah, that's super interesting. I feel like we, as onboarders, a lot of time really t- like try and focus on something that we sometimes is out of our control. Uh, so it's kind of refreshing to hear that from you. It's like, hey, we can give you all the tools that you need or try and figure out how to drive you there. But ultimately, like... Yeah, and we, we can learn, right? We can see if what we're trying is working or not. Mm. We can try multiple ways to simplify, simplify it further. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, and we can, we have all the tools at our end to understand what are the right habits we want to install, instill. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's like, we, that's the best we can do. And so, but what we have seen is that when that translates to more usage over time, that that's a success. Absolutely. And so I imagine, you know, it must be hard sharing all of these learnings across other, like there's so many other teams, right? Like how do you work with other teams um, to learn from one another, to make sure you're not stepping on one another's toes or doing something that someone's already like experimented and learned from? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's very, it's, it's a very meshed matrix system. Um, My team is itself pretty big. So what we have done is we have, from an engagement perspective, we have two sides to the coin. We have the optimization folks who are focused on the part of the journey. So we have someone dedicated to trial engagement and dedicated to new user onboarding. Uh, and what they do is they leverage existing surfaces and ways to reach out to our customers in app and, and improve that. So if you have a, a, a model that, that has just come up that can be used for um, you know welcome to Adobe kind of a thing, they, they are the ones who are optimizing it, trying different things, taking different cuts of segmentation and, and, and really trying to move the engagement KPI needle. We have another team that is, on the other hand, product focused, um, less journey focused. So they work very closely with our internal core PMs to actually open up new surfaces um, for us to engage with the customers. So uh, they're the ones who are thinking about, hey, we need some automated co- guided coach marks. How do we get that built? As I think I mentioned to you before, we don't use, we can't, we don't use third-party tools like app queues, et cetera. So for us, it's like, how do you quickly learn from what we have and then build in product uh, all of these different experiences. So a portion of my team is focused on driving that um, and generating all types of deep links, et cetera, that we can we can um, use to simplify um, a user's experience. But they're product focused and we have journey focused. So with the two sides of my own team, we are already interacting with uh, core PMs and engineering teams and our go-to-market and PMM leaders um, from an optimization perspective. And we run very tight squads uh, from the journey perspective who um, on a bi-weekly basis, like they, we lock in our roadmaps every quarter. And then on a bi-weekly basis, we're checking in, we're, we're uh, rolling out tests. Um, and it's a, like the focus there is like high velocity um, and, and, and to generate as many tests as possible to, to optimize what we already have. Um, so yeah, that's, and whereas the other team, which is focused on opening new surfaces, it's less about velocity and more about what's the next big thing that we can we can launch. And so there's that way we're kind of combining or connecting the dots across product, marketing, go-to-market, um, bringing together all of the different aspects. Hmm, that's super interesting. I, I'm impressed by every two <laughs> weeks. That sounds like, wow. I feel like yeah. I would have to really pay attention to what's going on. Even though I work in a fast paced, small team, I still feel like, you know, two, every two weeks has got to, and, and like bigger initiatives going at the same time, it's got to be a lot oh, yeah. to take a, take account of. This, this is why we have, um, you know, a wellness Fridays. <laughs> you, need, you need some wellness Fridays when you're launching, uh, yeah, experiments on a biweekly basis and meeting yep. about them and deciding whether or not they worked. And that, yeah, that's that's really really impressive, really cool. Yeah, thank you for thank you for sharing that. I want to jump into some screens that you uh, share with us that you you can really talk about, especially for like that the journey, the usage journey that you you're mentioning for the Creative Cloud. Um, I'm just bringing up the screen for people who are tuning in over audio on podcasts. There's a screen here 
Um, it says set your preferences. What do you want to first uh, do first with Illustrator? And they give you some options like create images, branding, draw and illustrate, create graphics and layouts and something else. Uh, Tifti, can you talk a little bit about like how like the I'm I'm guessing the purpose of what the purpose of this and like the impact that you've seen with this yeah. uh, with particular experience. So for context, um, this is what one actually sees um, when they download any app for the very first time, because they're also asked to, to download Creative Cloud Desktop, which is kind of like our internal app store. Um, and that's where people launch multiple apps that are in their plans. And so Creative Cloud is needed for you to for for you to be able to launch any other product. And so while that is installing, um, getting your intent for what you want to do with Adobe is kind of what we uh, get the users to do. This was done before I joined Adobe. This is led by the core product team, uh, uh, the CC Creative Cloud desktop product team. And as they did this, they partnered with someone from growth to test uh, test into this and then, uh, and then launched it. But what we do now is we try to leverage the intent from this model into everything else we do. So if, if we know that you've given your intent, then when you go into Photoshop, you would see like a banner in your home screen, which uh, would take into account what you said your intent was and we'll suggest tutorials for you um, or we suggest tools for you to kind of uh, uh, quick actions, et cetera, that, that ties back to your intent. Um, it's a little hard because not like if you already got Creative Cloud maybe a few years ago before this experience was there, you are not answering this question. So it's not like we have 100% of this all the time. But we work with what we have and we're continuously evolving this aspect of what is the right time and place to collect intent and goals because you ask it too many times, users get annoyed. And then they, you know, you ask it a few times, but then they want to see how you actually used the responses that they've, that they've provided. So um, we're really constantly trying to see how can we use the intent um, question, the answers that, that our users have given in everything they do after that within the, the individual apps. Hmm, that's awesome. That's like the goals. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> a lot of times, uh, a lot of us, you know, not at Adobe are just doing this very first part of it just to see why people are starting, but then, you know, don't necessarily connect all the dots. Was there something interesting and new that you learned um, from the something else uh, bucket, mm -hmm. like any kind of new goal that popped up that you weren't aware of before? Not really. I think people typically end up picking the top three. Um, this was kind of um, uh, discussed pretty heavily with, with various teams to understand what are the the top actions. Not to say this is perfect. We are still looking at ways to make this more interactive, more fun. All that is like part of the future roadmap. Um, and uh, and and in also like the order of questions, etc. We're still playing around with all of that. But for now, like the intent that we get of typically like we don't see too many of, of the something else. I think that's like also very deliberate. Like we've chosen just the three like most common things. Makes sense. And it's um it's it's pretty common to see people pick from those. Yeah, this is a really nitpicky question, but I've actually, <laughs> so if you don't have an answer, it's totally fine. But I, this is something I've experienced when building out these types of models is like, have you tested rearranging um, the choices? Because like sometimes I find that in my results, like I would have a really hard time finding what the actual thing was because there was so much noise on the first one or the middle option or whatever yeah. was the most prominent <laughs> Yeah, we did that in Litmus, I think, if I, if I remember right. <laughs> yeah, you and yeah, I. Yeah. Insider yeah. info. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, the, I don't know how, uh, because this was done before I uh, joined. They might have. I'm not 100% sure. I don't have the answers to that. But I agree with you in, in theory. Like, I think we have, like, you have to, not only this, there's like, you see, there's this three questions. This is the third one. Um, the order of those three and the order within each are things that we will continue to test. Um, this is pretty engineering heavy, so it's not it's not one of those things that it's easy for us to just quickly totally. create and test. Yep. <laughs> and so we have to really be deliberate. And also, I think we switched gears deliberately to see how we use the information because, to mm. your point, like connecting the dots is really important. Right. Um, and let's get the whole machine, like the whole system, running, and then we can optimize up up front as well. 
makes a ton of, makes a ton of sense. I, I really love. Yeah, thank you for sharing this. The other one that you shared uh, here is uh, this trial or experiment that you're you, you've been turning uh, trying out with your team. Uh, it's there's a launch uh, model. It points trials and new users to the right set of actions right now on the screen. It says welcome to Photoshop. Uh, there's three options: watch new, hands-on tutorials, and and quick actions. Can you talk a little bit about this this um, experience here? Yeah, yeah. So. Firstly, this is an example of how we, how the second part of my team kind of worked with the core product teams to launch a new model. This was originally just a what's new panel that was blanket for everybody just to show what new features are launched in Photoshop. But we decided to repurpose that for new users for onboarding in, in a different way. And what's new is a small portion of it, but there's hands-on tutorials and quick actions. And this to your point, Lila, we have been testing different uh, orders as well. And, and we did actually, uh, we actually went to usertesting.com and we got a bunch of feedback before we actually even launched our very first test, um, optimization test, because we wanted to understand from the users what is most useful for them. So for someone new coming in, um, there's two things that is very easy, like hands-on tutorials are very quick, three-minute you know, tutorials. Um, they're typically under five minutes which is the amount of patience anyone new has. Like they join in, you don't want to be sitting and looking at someone doing something for 20 minutes. So it's it's really handpicked, like short tutorials curated by Adobe. And then there's quick actions, which is remove background and things like that, which is a click of a button, which is now very popular outside of Adobe as well, which we know like users really want. Um, these are also tied to our intent uh, that you saw on the others on uh, on the on the CCD side, so we're playing around with intent. We're playing around with the most popular content and the most um, um, and and the and the and the most successful content for users. Like we we see the completion rates of these tutorials, and we use that. So playing around with all of these different things, and there's going to be a series of tests this year to see what's the easiest way and the most successful way to achieve that creative success that I was telling you about when we first started talking. Um, and this is something that we've launched in Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro. We'll continue to kind of do that across different products. Um, but yeah, this is this is going to be key. Uh, it's a key model for us. And you can get back to this and it's, you can see in the first screen, there's a little gift icon. Um, it's to show that hey, you can come back and click on that gift icon uh, to the top right, and you, you can launch this whenever you want, which um, wasn't the case before. So it's we've kind of like repurposed this to be a model that is helpful for you at the tip of your fingers. And also, um, these are all like deep linked into like specific uh, tutorials, right? So you can, if you go to quick actions, and then you'll see like uh, it says explore the quick actions there, the, the blue CTA. That opens up um, what we, you, you can see this little panel to uh, within that window, what we are calling the discover panel, which allows you to discover all the different types of quick actions that, that you want to kind of explore. One thing we learned is that we, like we've tried a version where we gave uh, the users suggested quick actions and users actually preferred exploring. That's one thing I've learned across the board. People just like to explore. So if you suggest it for them, it's less successful than if you get them, point them to the right place for them to explore. And then they, they do a lot more from there. Super interesting. I totally would have assumed the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what we, that, that's the first thing we thought, but then people like to explore, but then if you don't point them in the right direction, they get lost. So right. that's the, the balance between how do you point them to just the right set of things, but give that like mm. the pleasure of exploration. Yeah, it's such an art and a science. It's mm. it's uh, not not a simple um, throw up of a modal in any way. I love the concept of quick actions. Like I wish mm. every app could do this. Like provide some sort. Like I love like your example. Like remove the background. You know, I don't know what they are exactly, but like I'm picturing in my head like crop a you know image into a circle or like any of the com com common right. things you need to do that I'm doing all the time in these little tools. Like I absolutely yeah. love that, and like what a good way to kind of 
bite size your way yep. into your product, exactly. especially a product like Photoshop that has just so complicated. Mm. Like, you know, I mean, I'm just like, I used to use Photoshop as a, as a student. And now that I'm an adult, I feel like even more overwhelmed um, <laughs> by everything, but it's great because like, it's so powerful and now there's all these other options, but anyway, I'm rambling, but I just love the idea mm, of, same. Yeah, quick actions. Like, I want to have that for AppCube. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. The other thing I want to um, mention is around the exploring versus suggested. That's a really interesting insight. Uh, it might be that uh, creative cloud users, they're, they're creatives, and they like yeah. to explore. <laughs> they, um, they're clickers. Like, they're yeah. people who just like to explore versus maybe, like, a tool for marketers, like, me and Lila, we probably would have just like, get, just give me the answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, that's totally, right. totally. Like, that, yep. You, is that something you find? Uh, is that a? Uh, it is unique to Adobe. I mean, I think even in even in the previous companies I've worked at, it has been more give me suggested, you know, content. But you know, if you if you think of Netflix, right? They they give you suggested content, but they still give you enough to explore. I think they've they've maintained that balance. I think uh, if there is, if it's something in the creative field, entertainment field. Um, people don't want to just be pigeonholed into something. Um, they want to be able to explore, but they also want you to know that that you understand them. And so we do provide suggestions in different forums. So like, for example, if you open the Photoshop app and you went to the homepage, you'd see a banner there and there we would suggest specific tutorials. Um, and, you know, that's sometimes you suggest it's, it's like a rotating banner. So in some, some, sometimes you suggest specific tutorials and then sometimes it'd be like, hey, explore all these quick actions. So we try to maintain a balance there as well. But it's constantly this what's that balance between direct suggestions and um, and, and letting a user explore and have fun. I love the concept of having fun while you're learning a product. What a novel idea. What a novel idea. <laughs> I love that. Um, I mean, we've, you know, normally I'm asking folks, like, what are some things that surprised you? But I think we've kind of, uh, there's quite a few things that have surprised you um, in your journey with Adobe so far. Um, you know, is there anything else like um, results that maybe challenged your expectations from previous uh, yeah. roles? Yeah. So uh, I haven't directly tried um, some of these tests. I know from historical context that I've been told because I've been at Adobe for like a year and a half now, but um, they've been they've been doing things for longer than that, obviously. I've heard that previously stuff like gamification and checklists haven't worked which I was like, wow, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, right? You would think that that's something that everybody wants and like everybody wants to be uh, competing, but it looks like uh, the adult, like the creative users, they don't want to be like in any kind of rat race or like, you know, be made, be forced to do anything. So it's, it, it's not like we've completely buried the concept. We've kind of learned from what didn't work and we're trying going to try different flavors and different incentives this year but it's it's interesting that some of these very obvious tactics that have worked for all other companies don't always work and this is to say i think it's not just adobe right i think for every company to understand those users and really figure out um who they are why they come and adobe's complex ecosystem makes a, makes it very difficult for us to answer that very simple question who are your customers what do they want there's so many of them. The the type of people who go for Illustrator is so different from the from the type of people who go to go for Photoshop or Fresco or Premiere Pro. There's just very different types of users, and so you can't have a, 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 a an experience that meets everybody's needs. You have to look at um, every individual sub segment. And so one thing I've learned is something that we are learning is that we have to run like lots of different small, we to get lots of different small wins that are, that are very personalized that then add up uh, to move the macro needle. Uh, but it's very difficult to just do one thing that blanket is a success across all different types of our customers, even within a product. Like even, even someone who buys a Photoshop single app is different from someone who buys the bundle, which has all apps because they're more professionals versus someone who just wants Photoshop might be more of a hobbyist. So it's very, it's, it's, it's very different, very complex. And so some of the common tactics that a lot of other companies use don't necessarily always work. 
Thanks for an exciting uh, work, day, work, work day, though. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, right. no, uh, no assumptions can be made. I bet you're um, using the don't assume makes the ass out of you and me phrase very often. <laughs> and also just don't give up because it didn't work the first time, right? Like just try many different ways and really learn from, you know, do lots of cuts of the data to understand did we see a directional lift in one direction, in one sub segment? Maybe we can poke there more. So our data science team are tied to our hip because, um, really necessary (laughs) yeah Yeah. absolutely totally love it uh other than that experiment that you that you showed to us is there any other ones that you're like looking forward to try obviously not checklists because (laughs) apparently no no no. we're actually like going back really looking at it like what worked (laughs) what didn't work um because it's 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 also like you know where do you present the checklist? Is it inside mm. the app? Is it outside the app? Is it um, is it going to be different for what if for Photoshop in in different plans? And now that we have more of an understanding of our users, and now that we have more understanding of all our core actions from like three years ago when it was t- tried, let's try a different angle. Mm. But we're not just launching a test. Like I said, we started to do a lot more. You know, let's do quick user surveys, user testing get you know customer feedback before we do it and that i think is one more thing i want to call out is like not so common because growth teams tend to move so fast that we take uh, concepts and ideas based on impact and we just drive the test uh, but to take a step back and say let me test some of these things with users um it may not be in a large scale like a like core product development, but even a little bit gives us really unique insights and and steers us in a, in the right direction. So we are going to be testing more of those. I think also just taking it for for new users and trial. Like for me, it's about taking a step back and really answering those questions. Like let's understand deeply understand our customers and let's see how we can think differently and try different um, different tactics, creative ways to get through to that creative audiences. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love the idea of like, you know, user testing something like as a marketer, right? Like not necessarily maybe testing a full experience, but, um, you know, kind of getting the language, getting the feedback, Mm -hmm. getting the ideas before you even implement. Because I feel like a lot of times we do kind of go all the way down that path when really we could wait and level it up like one step before okay. that um yeah. very often because we are just under a lot of pressure to deliver i think mm-hmm. and, um, but the testing is very important um it's actually something else that made me think of when you're trying to decide um and you're trying to find something to test on you know how do you like so, for example at accus we have uh, dump some like homepage uh, message testing with a tool called Winter, um, which has been really cool. Like do some A-B um, testing on our website copy. But I think we can sometimes get in this world too, where it's like we go through so many iterations of that specific thing. And then we kind of forget what the original intent of the test was, or we get too bogged down in the feedback that we're getting. Um and I'm just wondering in general, like in your professional expertise, DP, how do you kind of separate out that noise or like like focus on trying to get that original message through? Because I feel like sometimes with the testing, it can kind of put you on a totally different path. That was my very rambling answer, but it was hard, hard for me to, um, a very rambling question I made. It was hard for me to articulate that, but I feel like it's a common problem. I think um, the one way we're dealing with that is to focus on variety every quarter. So we're not just we're not just in every two weeks, we're not just like doing the same iterating on the same test. Totally. But we're running 40 different tests. Uh, um and yeah. so it's it it gives us new learnings and we then like will pick the test that worked, that had a positive direction to then go down that path. But what that means is that we have already got like five or six different leads you know, rather than focusing on the, just that one thing. Um, I think for us, it's a, I wish we had this problem of like just focusing on one thing and going deep in. We have to try so many different things given how complex and big the ecosystem is. Um, we are on the other hand, trying to figure out how can we 
bet, get get better and faster with copy testing and trying multiple tests of the same kind because we have like baking periods given that you know we we wait for 28 days for to measure engagement so we don't have actually the 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 time to try too many um too many different tactics with the same test that's not to say that's necessarily the right approach i'm just saying that that has automatically solved some of that problem for us. <laughs> yeah, makes total sense. Makes total sense. But maybe um, that's one way to look at it. Like, how do you push yourself to think variety um, with that one goal in mind, which is I need to get you, like, what's your one goal? It's to get users to create a success quickly. And you can try it with, like, these are four or five different ways. And you can try, like, one or two tests which have, which are like the similar tests that focus on different segments with slightly different copies, uh, but then really like push yourself to have that variety, which may then solve your problem. Like you, you, your, your brain is constantly asking for more learnings rather than more learnings of, of one kind. Right. Totally. Totally. Diversify. Come up with come up with lots of ideas. <laughs> we need to. I feel like we need to have more brainstorms on our team, even though we have a lot. Anyway, Deepti, thank you so much for chatting with us about all of this fun stuff. Where can people uh, find you online? Can they connect with you on LinkedIn? Is there yeah. any other stuff you're working on that you wanted to share? Unfortunately, we, we're not much of an open source company, so <laughs> stuff is not online. But yeah, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to chat. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It was a pleasure to see you, as always. Thank you. Yeah. Likewise. This was yeah. Fun. That's uh thank everybody for tuning in. Ramley, should we do this again next time? Yeah, for sure we should. Thank you so much, <laughs> DP, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.